Welcome to the Empowered Spirit Show. This is your host, Terry Ann Hyman. I'll explore the connection to the human spirit in a way that helps to navigate your life, including crisis. I am passionate about helping you to open up to your intuition and the metaphysical world of spirit to find your confidence in your own inner guidance. Take a pause, be inspired, learn ways to show up focused, centered, and more dynamic in your everyday life. Welcome back to the Empowered Spirit Show. Thank you so much for tuning in and joining me today. This episode is being sponsored by Ritual and Shelter. Are you looking for a magical place to shop and hold space? Check out Ritual and Shelter online or in Homewood, Alabama. Browse through their bookstores covering topics such as energy healing, crystal healing, Reiki, chakras, auras, the Akashic Records, shadow work, astrology, and earth-based healing. You can also find herbal teas and tinctures alongside crystals and oils to help establish a mindful mindset and fluid ambience before meditation, ritual work, and reflection. Ritual and Shelter is dedicated to providing one-on-one in-depth conversation with customers to help them find the most efficient healing methods and resources that match their unique interest and energy. They offer tarot sessions, Reiki, sound bowl, and crystal healings, and now new on their offerings are witch consultations. Visit RitualShelter.com to book an appointment and bring peace back to the body, mind, and spirit. Or find them on Instagram at Ritual Shelter Shop and now on Pinterest at Ritual Plus Shelter. As this podcast goes to air, we continue to move through the eclipse portal of energy. The solar eclipse comes in on Wednesday, October 2nd in the sign of Libra. Whereas the lunar eclipse was about pulling us out of our comfort zones, releasing old karma, the solar eclipse is about stepping forward with a new sense of who we truly are. It is about setting intentions to trust your higher self, to connect with the wisdom of your soul. The energy of Libra is about finding balance. Do you take time to pause and slow down, or do you keep yourself so busy you don't know how to sit still? When we continually keep going and don't recognize the power that comes from pausing, it can be draining. Within each of us is an inner strength that comes from the wisdom of our soul. From my perspective, this soul force is strong and embodies our individuality and core passions. It represents the essence of who we are, an intrinsic part that cannot be ignored and yearns for expression. Many people think this soul force, if it exists at all, is unrelated to our everyday lives. I think the opposite. To truly find satisfaction in our day and reach our fullest potential, regardless of our field, we must engage with and harness this inner power. Otherwise, we will find ourselves drained of energy. Our higher self filters energy. It helps us receive higher guidance. But when we are too busy and drained, the information we seek becomes elusive. We don't trust the messages. We continually search and wander. Allow the energy of this eclipse to guide you to set new patterns. It's the perfect time to step into your magic and embrace change. Have you ever felt like a pushover, always ready to lend a hand at your own expense? Or perhaps you found yourself overwhelmed, juggling too many ideas at once. If so, it might be time for a significant transformation in your life. Are you tired of feeling drained? Are you ready to ground your energy and focus on what truly matters instead of getting lost in distractions? In my recent quiz, What's Your Evil Archetype? I discovered a big difference since last year. Last year, the top response was a people pleaser. This year, however, it was the wandering soul, indicating a struggle to focus amidst an excess amount of wandering energy. Following closely was the saboteur, whose self-sabotaging efforts prevents progress. Do these patterns resonate with you? Many of us find ourselves caught in these cycles without even recognizing it. Old habits keep you in the comfort zone. They are why you walk around feeling stressed, anxious, and fearful to move forward. They're why you're having trouble trusting new decisions and making new choices about your life. These habits keep you from being present and enjoying your path. I'm excited to announce my upcoming online program, Monetize Your Energy, launching in October to recognize these reoccurring patterns and to get out of them. Imagine breaking free from these cycles once and for all. I have a unique and powerful approach to help you do just that. If you'd like to explore this further, schedule a complimentary Monetize Your Energy call and let's see how this program can help you. 
In today's episode, I continue the discussion of expanding states of consciousness. I welcome back to the show Maureen St. Germain with her book, Living Your Best 5D Life. We talk about how it is possible to undergo dimensional shifts and make spiritual upgrades that allow you to shift instantly into 5D. In this episode, we talk about practices for thinking in 5D, the Merkaba. 8D, the higher self, the light body, navigating the higher dimensions, and how you can harness your strength and energy to live your best 5D life. Before we move into the episode, let's take a moment to pause, breathe, and set an intention for this new moon solar eclipse coming in. So wherever you are, if you can, close your eyes. Taking a nice deep inhale, breathing up the body. And as you exhale, call all your energy into you, call it in. Take another deep inhale, breathing up the body. Exhale, breathing all the way down, slowing down. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And as you exhale, begin to align your energies, calling in the spiritual body to align right on top of the mental, the emotional, the physical bodies, centering. Inhale, expanding the breath up the body. And now as you exhale, dropping deep into your heart, right into the deepest part, feeling that connection, your spirit and the greater spirit, source, creator. Know that you are loved, guided, protected, feeling all this energy coming in around us as we call in our Reiki masters, the teachers, calling in the archangels for joy and love, calling in the crystal beings for magnification, amusement, calling in your higher self to align right on top of the crown, taking another deep inhale, breathing up the body, and exhale back into the heart. As we take this time to honor this new season, where I am, we find ourselves in the season of fall, just opening up. And as I teach in the medicine well, we find ourselves facing the direction of the west, where the sun sets each and every day. We notice the beautiful crimson colors of the sunset. We notice the cycles of life. We harvest our work. We bring all that we have in with thanksgiving and blessings. We call in the directions to the west, the north, the east, and the south, above us, below us, deep into the heart, taking a moment now right here in the very center, setting your intention, this new moon energy. See yourself, feel, know, hear these intentions, and allow the elevated emotions how you want to feel in this new season through this new moon eclipse energy and let it radiate out from the heart, setting the energy of your aura, programming it all around you. Taking another deep inhale and exhale all the way down, grounding, feel the heart open, feel the illumination of your third eye. And as you're ready, blinking the eyes back open, coming back. Today we welcome back Maureen J. St. Germain. She is the founder of the St. Germain Mystery School, the Ascension Institute Mystery School, and Akashic Records International. An internationally recognized teacher and intuitive, she is also the creator of more than 30 guided meditations, CDs, and now available on the app Illuminate. She is the author of eight books, including Waking Up in 5D. She lives near Sedona, Arizona, and offers workshops worldwide. So let us welcome Maureen back to the show. Welcome, Maureen. Thank you. And thank you for having me again. I really like working with you. 
Well, thank you. Yes. So, so much has gone on since you've been in the show. That was 2017. So much has shifted. Pandemic, the world, the cosmic forces, everything. So, yes, what a great time to talk about this conversation in your latest book, Living Your Best 5D. How awesome is that? Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's been a labor of love, truly. Thank you. Yeah. So I guess the first question is like, what led you to write this book now? Well, I had uh, been guided to do three books on 5D. So the first book you interviewed me for, and that was Waking Up in 5D. And then the second book was called Living Your Best 5D Life. And this book is called Mastering Your 5D Self. And so there's a lot of tools and tips in there. And then uh, Living Your Best Fight, Fiat 5D Life is a book that is coming out, has come out this fall. So what led me to write it was the fulfillment of a uh, guided message that said three books on this subject. Well, that is awesome. Yeah. Well, you started us off talking about waking up in 5D, and now you're talking about living 5D. So where does this one open up to from where that one left off? Well, first of all, um, you know, it's very interesting that you asked this question because my editors wanted me to include um, references to the first book, but not to be completely um, not attached to it. So there's a little bit of information from the first book if you haven't read the first book. Obviously, what we really want is for you to go back and read the first book. Um so many of the things that I taught in the first book, I've taken to a whole new level. And people who are practicing those tools are having incredible results. So for example, in the first book, I had the bedtime prayer and I had the morning prayer and I had the um, five D Merkaba and things like that. And then, um, in this Living Your Best 5D Life, I've updated the evening prayer in one of the appendixes. And I also included an incredible meditation that was given to me about seven years ago. And I've been holding off releasing it. Um, I say given to me by my guides. And I was working with my uh people who are in the annual program, the Ascension Institute, for about three years, making sure that this would be appropriate for people and that they'd be able to learn it and grow from it. And one of the things that we learned is, one of the things that I learned is that everyone who does this 8D Merkaba, and this is what it looks like, only giant figure would fit around your body, you're inside of it, not a little you inside of it, but a great big one of these, is to build it. So I actually have the building instructions in one of the appendices for the process, because once you build it, then you have the sacred geometry in you. And it's all based on the phi ratio and how important it is. What we are discovering is that each of us have a level of um, dynamic sacred geometry, dynamic uh, center outward balanced energy. And a lot of that's been perverted. And what we're doing now is is coming home to our original blueprint. So a lot of that has been perverted. What do you mean by that? There were beings whose job it was to oversee humanity's development on earth. And they chose a different agenda. And they are known as the fallen angels. And their original agenda taught us to be competitive, taught us to fear our neighbors. And what that did for our uh, development is it helped us build more war machine. Now, today we're, remem we're remembering or rediscovering that there's nothing wrong with our neighbor and that we don't need to compete with one another because that's not what it's all about. And one of the things that, that is so clear to me is that our because of this agenda, our technology moved way ahead of our spirituality. Now, in the process, these beings altered our DNA and put matrices in the field that would cause us to align 
with those things rather than the geometry that represents who we really are. Mm, quite fascinating. Yes, definitely. We are sacred geometry. We are made of the elements for sure. Yeah. And that sacredness within each cellular structure. Yeah, I totally get That's it. Right. Yeah, for sure. And today, being that we're recording this, it's not airing, but we're recording it on this portal of 9 9. And so that too has light code activations into it that can help us understand more and more about the ascension. I know you use that word a lot about Christ consciousness, about raising our vibration and the humanity is shifting in the human form as well. And I think that's a lot of what you're talking about. Yeah. Indeed, because I, I've been shown that each of us is going to integrate our divine self and keep going. We're not going to die to ascend we're actually going to bring in the divine self. And what the divine self is, is an aspect of who you really are that's so connected to source that you the, you have plenty of choice, but none of the choices that, that occur to you are harmful to you or anyone else. No. I think, too, one of the things that this ascension, as I went back and reviewed from where we left off back in 2017, it's like, whoa, and looking at that interview and looking at the work, you know, it's like, yeah, so many of us recognize this, but some of that fear, maybe that's what you're calling the perverted energy, keeps us from really believing it and bringing it out and really opening up more. It's like we do, and then we shrink, and we do, and then we shrink. But I feel this portal of light and this work that you're talking about and the whole idea which I want to get into is that whole idea of the 8D and the, the Merkaba, how that can help us. And I think that trust and that bringing it forward and even talking about it more, I think that can help us all to understand and really live, as you're saying, your best 5D. Yeah, so I think that's a great way to look at it. Well, you know, they say that children who wear uniforms in school are better behaved. They have respect for the uniform and they act more mature. And I believe that when we shake off these perversions that influence us, these matrices that are hanging over us and making it easy to misbehave, when we shake that off, we're going to be our best selves quite naturally. You know, and the metaphor for me is you drive down a dirt road that's got ruts in the road. Your car is going to go in the ruts in the road because that's what happens unless you make a very focused effort to not drive in the ruts. And that's what we're learning to do right now. We're making a focused effort to not fall into some of those behaviors that we used to think were okay. You know, every man for himself, that doesn't work anymore. Uh, you know, take what we want from the earth and, and not worry about the consequences. That doesn't work anymore. So these kinds of things that make us much more aware that we're part of a much bigger system and that we are capable of so much more spiritually, physically, mentally, and more. It's amazing. <laughs> it is. I agree with that every man for itself. No, that's not the way it is. That isolates us. That separates us from source from each other. So we want to drop into the heart. We want to feel that heart flowing energy, which is going to help us access what you're talking about. I truly believe. Yeah. Right. So. Mm -hmm. I know I've talked about, I think I kind of say a Merkaba, you say Merkaba. Yeah, it's like, this is my vehicle. I remember my teacher, my very first spiritual teacher used to have that bumper sticker on a car and I'd look at it and go, what does she mean? What does she mean, right? That was many years ago. But tell us your understanding of that and how you teach the idea, especially with the 8D. Yeah. Okay. So first of all, um, the Merkaba is a double tetrahedron or a star tetrahedron, and it looks like this. And this shape is a shape that we build around the body. And then we spin one a version, one whole version of this one way and one whole version another way. And then the remaining, the third version of this, that they're all superimposed, are uh, it, it is stationary. And, and the axis point for this, like the Earth axis, is the pranic tube. So it kind of gives you a sense of, you know, it goes out way out outside of your body. And what it does for you is helps you anchor into a higher vibrational version of you, helps you um, step into that connection of who you really are. Now, to a layman, the easy explanation is wearing a Merkaba is the same as wearing your heaven on earth suit. 
So it's an idea that what all the traditions teach us is heaven, I'm seeing is the fifth dimension or the 5D uniform, which is the Merkaba. And so that Merkaba then gets elevated to a higher shape, an Icasa dodecahedron that it's nested in phi, very, very powerful vibration. So every cross is in phi. Uh-huh. And phi is this magic uh, relationship that exists in the body between your little finger and your wrist to your little finger to your wrist to the joint. So if this is one, this is one point, this is one point six. And and we have this all over our body, even in our DNA. And so when we uh, turn this on, we are able to step outside of the matrix. <laughs> yeah. So needed right now. So many shifts and changes going on in consciousness. And this is where we're headed into a really trusting and understanding and bringing this language into our everyday life, into that human existence. So needed. You know, Murray, when I moved from New York to Birmingham, so much of what I was taught was hushed, hushed, hushed. And it began to hush me, right? And then all these experiences I've had since that wow. time. Yeah. And I did like, you know, kind of like I was saying, like, too, like, no, you can't talk about it, you can't. But now I found that, no, I have to. This is my purpose. And right. And part of me was so squashed down and had a near death experience and it had to come forward. And now I totally agree with you. And I totally recognize, you know, people sometimes will say to me, well, the elements, that's so simple. Fire, earth and water. Big deal. It's like big deal. Like, wait a minute. This is what we're made of. This is a big deal to feel this. And on the same token, the sacred numbers, the sacred cellular shape, we can have have the consciousness because cells have consciousness and all of this has consciousness to speak to us. I mean, we could get down to like the fascia of the body and look at it in terms of humanness, right? Our fascia holds consciousness. Our fascia holds this electromagnetic fields. So yes, I very much appreciate your work. You, before you go on, you brought up something that's near and dear to my heart. Um, I, I was, uh, I'm the magician carrying these sacred blends called um, Aramandalas. And they they come in, you know, bottles like this, and they're blends that were channeled by Mary Magdalene. And when I asked my guides how they work, they said the emotions reside on the fascia or fascia. And what this does is lift them off the fascia and releases them. So I didn't know what the word fascia meant, <laughs> Terry Ann. Yes. Yes. I had to look it up. Yes. I did a deep study because my energy fields were locked in the fascia of my feet. My feet. Wow. Yeah. But now there's so much more research about it. I love that. I love that what you just told us too, and having those vibrations to help with that because fascia is designed to help protect us, right? We get injured, the fascia comes in, but it stays stuck. Mm -hmm. And if we don't work with it consciously, the pain of what we suffered stays stuck. Yeah. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. And it's interesting because, you know, when we when we over replay a wound, you know, we do it too many times, we actually create a divot in the fascia. <laughs> so you know a lot of this technical stuff about the fascia. I only know the spiritual stuff that they've told me. <laughs> Divots, that's funny. Yeah, little holes. Well, yeah, you could see it as little holes, and then those little holes attract more of that same energy. That's how I would look at it. Exactly. But I think it's so fascinating mm -hmm. when we can slow down and we can start to really understand what goes on inside of us and the cosmic energies that we connect to, the light people, the light source. All of this is opening up so much more. It really is. Yeah. For sure. So you talk about your higher self. You talk about meditations in the book. You also give a possibility of receiving the meditations, I believe, right? Isn't that how the book is designed? Yes. And in for the limited time, of people who buy the book can go out to our website and we have a landing page where we're actually giving away a free recorded version of the meditation because it's so much easier to have someone call out the steps, you know, once you understand what's happening. And uh, I'm also including a tube of light. It's called the Grand Tube of Light. And it's another one of those matrices that 
uh, creates a field of energy that is so powerful, it's impenetrable. So when you're traveling beyond the matrix, you want to be in your tube of light, so to speak, so that you're in a place where you cannot be um, compromised. I'll just say it that way. That's important. Very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You light up when you talk about it. It's so beautiful to see. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so you also talk about your higher self challenge. What is that about? Is that something you offer? Is that part of the book? Um, it's in the app and the app is free and it's in the wisdom section of the app and it's three uh, protocols into one protocol. So there's three things you do that give you a higher self connection that is pretty close to perfect. And what happens is you follow a very linear instruction. You do this, ask unimportant, insignificant questions for 45 days. You take yourself through a meditation and get symbols or signals for yes, no, and neutral. And you set aside your pendulum and your muscle testing and all those other divination tools. And at the end of 45 days, your higher self connection has been secured and then you can ask your higher self anything. And it has been so amazing for me and thousands of my students. You know, years ago, when I was teaching this in a class, before I had written about it, I was back in Paris and a woman uh, who had been in an earlier class reached out to me and she said, I just want you to know that I've had people come up to me and say, how can you do you know this thing that we tried and didn't work but you do it and it's so successful how what you know what do you attribute this to and she said i wanted you to know that i ask my higher self and if my higher self says you know it's okay to proceed i do and my higher self has saved me from major accidents it's given me gifts that i couldn't imagine could happen i've met people who were relatives that I didn't know were relatives, but my higher self told me to talk to a stranger, you know, those kinds of things. So amazing. Yeah, I agree. I feel like our higher self comes in to filter all the messages, guides, angels, whatever we need to know. And then it comes like right into the heart and then we open up to it. I find it very important. You know, that's really important for people to understand your guides and your angels are not going to abandon you just because you're developing your higher self. And your higher self wants you to have those connections, but the, the angels and the guides want you to have your higher self connection because that's who you're becoming. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I think yeah. it's so important that we have the power to access our energy, right? Yeah. Exactly. Sovereignty. Sovereignty. There you go. I do. I love it. Because we can, you know, find ourselves when we're separated and lost and we have those stress and struggles and then we wonder what it is and we start searching out there and then we just continue to feel lost, right? So having the ability to really trust that, I love the challenge that you give because it really does help people to really, really, as you said, seal it in, like really confirm it, lock it in. I think that's so important, especially today in this age of information. Yeah. David Hawkins. Yeah. I love this. I heard this quote recently. David Hawkins is, you know, like the mind doesn't have the ability to discern the truth. Dropping into the heart, dropping into that soul vibration of light can help us to understand our truth and where we stand. Yeah. Well, and one of the things that I discovered is when you're wearing your Merkaba, and it's simply a, a five minute meditation that you do every day um, and you keep, quote, the field up on your own until it stays up permanently. But when you're wearing your Merkaba, people can't lie to you. I mean, I've re I've looked at the newspaper or or something that came in through an email, and I look, I go, that's not true. And I'm surprised at myself that I'm even saying it. I love that. So Because it is a way to discern the truth is what you're saying. Right. There's so much right. information out in the world. And now with all the AI, it's even harder. It's like, yeah, how do we know what is true and what is not? <laughs> right? <laughs> It really is. Yes. So these are ways that we can. And it does take sitting still and it does take getting quiet and it does take finding time to slow down. We are in a fast paced society. We can't access it from mm -hmm. that fast pace. But when we slow down, we could feel that higher vibration. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. On, I did a book summit where I interviewed like 10 people and I interviewed Lee Holden, who's coming out with a book um, ready, ready, set, slow, I think it's called. And uh, he's a Qigong master, but he talks about doing everything much slower and with very big deliberation. And, you know, e even for me, even though I fit many things into my 
day, sometimes I don't slow down. So when I read his book and then did the interview, I thought, wow, I I can use this. You know, I need to just chill out even more as we use that phrase. Yeah. Yeah. It's so important. And I know we all get busy. I get busy too. I got to get to my computer. I got to get here. I got to get there. But really when we slow down, it's like it bends time. Mm -hmm. Then we are more focused and then we are more aligned. And as you said, we can remember to wear our Merkaba. We can begin to remember to walk in the light, however you want to look at it. But just to have mm -hmm. that truth in our heart and feel that connection. That's been a big change for me is really being in the heart and really feeling those connections that come about through the exchange we have with each other and really feel that instead. I don't know. There was a tendency of fear, like push it away. Who may know? Push it away. No, it's like receiving that light. And I think that's some of the activation that I have seen coming forward. Do you really understand that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what's your mission here? Yeah. Why do you do this work, Maureen? <laughs> well, I've known since the time I was very young that my mission was to help people be the best they could be. And I don't think I've ever wavered from that. And at one point when I was in a group, and I'd been seeking the answer to that question as a young adult, and someone looked at me and says, you know, when you enter the room, the room lights up. And I thought, okay, it's I'm lighting up the room. And that is my mission, to light up uh, the opportunities for people to step into their true nature and their true wisdom and to be the best they can be. I love that, to light up. Yeah. Have you ever doubted this work for you? Was there ever a time when you're like, no, not me, who, me? Uh, many times. <laughs> One of the guided meditations about manifestation is called Dancing in the River of Golden Opportunity. And I was at a really low point. I was completely broke. I was in debt big time. And I was scared. You know, you know, how I, that, that debt thing just really freaks you out. And um, I was in the Akashic Records and I asked them what I should do. And they said, well, keep dancing in the river of golden opportunity. And then they said more. So I, I did that. And then the next day, I got a call from a friend who was also in dire straits. She owned a flower essence company and a whole bunch of companies owed her money, blah, blah, blah. And she didn't know what to do. And I said, well, you know, I, I was given this meditation um, yesterday. You want to do it with me? And she said, yeah. She calls me back a couple hours later. She said, that's incredible. One of the spas called me and said, come over. We've got a check for you. A week later, two weeks later, I don't remember now, same drama, different company, but same woman, same, you know, I'm not going to be able to make my house payment kind of a thing. And we did the meditation again. And within 24 hours, she was able to be paid and everything kind of took care of itself. After that happened, I asked my guides, am I supposed to, am I supposed to put this together for others? It had not occurred to me. <laughs> I thought it was just for me. You know, I was I was the one hurting. It turns out that all these meditations that I have done over the years, most of them were for me. <laughs> my drama, my, you know, dysfunction. And, you know, even the one called Sell Your House Faster. You know, I I gave it to a guy who hadn't been able to sell his house. It had been in the market for a very long time. He played it for 24 hours. And that day he got a full price offer. You, you know, you can't make this stuff up. Anyway. Thinking it's for us, but we're also bringing in the consciousness of what's around us. I know that feeling. Yeah. It's taken me a while to really recognize that. Yeah. 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 You know, and I'll share with your audience, um, you know, it, it's very important for each of you to know that we're all becoming who we are. Yeah. And one day I asked my guides, you know, am I doing anything to, um, you know, prevent me from being my full ascended master self? And they said, yeah. <laughs> and so I said, what? And they said, well, you know, when you're driving on the San Diego freeway and somebody cuts you off or they take the spot you were going to take, you know, that kind of stuff, you get a little upset. You know, you, 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 I don't use bad words, but I do use sometimes I, you know, would use names like what a dummy and what were they thinking? You know, that kind of stuff. And so I decided making it a game. So I would announce to myself, oh, well, that guy, that guy probably needs to get where he's going much, 
much faster than me or much more importantly than me. Or I'd say, they probably didn't see me, you know? And and as as these stories in my head grew, I started laughing about the craziness around me. And that literally helped me level up a whole nother level because it didn't just apply to road rage. It applied to everything in my life. I no longer was finding myself freaking out about other people's behavior when it, I thought it affected me. It never affects me. It's my choice. What a revelation. It is a choice. It is a choice. Yeah. It is a choice in how we look at everything, you know, and I think that's what this whole lifting of vibration is. We can stay in the struggles or we can really value everything around us. Mm -hmm. It really can. And when we start to have that value, that's that flow of love. The flow of money is love. Love is love is money, right? That's a beautiful connection we can start to really recognize instead of the fear of debt. And I know I've been there too, right? But as we lift this and recognize the value of everything that we are and bring, to the table and live our life with that value, it definitely lifts us and can help activate these codes that you so talk about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So the book is out September 12th, you had mentioned. Where can we find your work? What's going on? Where would you like to direct us? Um, the book is available on Barnes & Noble. It's on... Um, Inner Traditions. Yeah. Available on Amazon and, and bookstores everywhere. Um the work that I'm doing right now is available on our website as well. So we have uh, St. Germain Mystery School. We have trainings on the Akashic Records. I'm going to be doing a fall youthing uh, training, which rolls back the clock. And this is based on an African ceremony. And I've been doing it for over 15 years. And it's pretty, pretty awesome. And then, the, then I also share a lot of the things that I do to stay young and support my body and, and my body elemental. We also have annual programs that are going to start in towards the end of September for the school year. And they are phenomenal training. So Ascension Institute is a remarkable program that gives people a full on jump start to how they can begin to comprehend what's around them and then apply it in their own world. I'm in my 10th year. Amazing. So it's gone very well. And we also do uh, multiple years. Um, I'm trying to think what else we have going on. Oh, and I, I have various teaching assignments and trade shows and things like that that we do. And that's all on our event page. Yeah. And you are located in Sedona. Is that right? Yes, yes. That's a whole another surprise. I had no expectation of being in Sedona. And one of my clients told me, a woman in Australia, who had been in classes in China with me, told me that she was given a message that I needed to open my school in Sedona. And she was told to give me a sum of money. And she did. And this was right before COVID started. So I hadn't gotten a chance to do anything about it. And then COVID hit and I wasn't doing anything. But somebody, a well-beloved friend of mine, was putting on a conference in Sedona outdoors. So she wasn't breaking any rules. And while I was there, while I was getting ready to go, I got the idea, oh, you know what? I should look at property while I'm here. And, you know, things just fell into place. And I ended up here. And I remember thinking at the time, because I, I've often lived in two places where I've had two homes, an apartment and a house somewhere like that. And um, I was just in one place, a lot of stuff in storage. And my guide said, two weeks before the move, uh, take everything you care about because you're not coming back here for a very long time. And it was nine months before I went back to New York wow. City where I'd wow. been living. Well, I do want to say, as an attest to all that you're saying, especially the youth, when I saw your book come in and your pictures come in, I'm like, wow, she looks really good. And then when I went back to review our previous podcast, it was very evident. So I just applaud you and all that you're doing. And it does show you have this beautiful glow to you for sure. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. really. Yeah. 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 Those are like my first thoughts. Like, wow. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, years, and <laughs> I'm getting younger. I tell people, you know, if I've been doing this for 15 years and we roll back the clock two years, it means I'm 30 years younger than my biological age. 
There you go. I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah. So I know we've kind of said this, but if you would leave our listeners with this an uplifting thought, how do you feel that working in the idea of living your best 5D can empower the spirit right now? I believe that our clear intention makes all the difference in the world. And the easy way to make sure you have clear intention is to say a simple mantra every day. I'm asking for a day of heaven on earth for me and everyone I come in contact with and everyone I am in contract with. And that sets a stage that everywhere you go, the lovely golden fairy dust that you're vibing out falls on everyone else too. That lovely golden dust falls all around us for sure. Living in the light. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your work and all that you're doing and joining us today. Thank you to your spirit. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been great fun, Terry Ann. Thank you so much. Namaste. Yes, it is time to get out of the fear. Set clear intentions for yourself to raise your consciousness and allow this golden light of the fifth dimension to shine on you. Feel the energy of the Merkaba all around you. It is time to activate the connection you have with your soul and the greater source, creator, God, to manifest your life. Be sure to check out Maureen's work. All the links for her will be in the show notes. And be sure to schedule your Monetize Your Energy call to see if my program is a fit for you, or even schedule a spiritual upgrade breakthrough call with me, and let's talk about the number one thing holding you back. Thanks again for listening. I am so grateful. This is your host, Tarianne Hyman. To your spirit, namaste.